Hey everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. In today's video, we will learn how to create a mini clock and date widget using HTML, CSS and JavaScript. We will follow small and simple steps to build this widget. So let's dive into the tutorial. We begin with the HTML structure. First off, we have a div element with the class name container. Inside the container, we have another div with class name clock container followed by a div with class name date container. Moving on to CSS, we use the universal selector to set some default styles for all the elements on the web page. We set the padding and margin to zero and set the box sizing to border box so that the elements total width and height includes the padding and border. Finally, we set the font family for all the elements to Poppins, which is a popular sans serif font. In the next step, we set the background color of the body to a dark gray color. This gives our web page a sleek and stylish backdrop. Now let us include the external script file into our HTML document. We use the script tag for this purpose. Moving on to JavaScript, we first have a couple of variables defined using let keyword. They are date container and clock container. These variables use the document.query selector method to select the HTML elements with the class names date container and clock container respectively. These elements will be used to display date and time information. Next. We have an array called weekdays which consists name of all the weekdays starting from Sunday. Let me fill this array. Now that I'm done with the weekdays array, next I'll create an array with the month names. Let me just copy and paste the month names here instead of typing. Okay, now that we are done. We define a constant called date clock. It uses the set interval function which repeatedly executes a provided function. In this case, an anonymous function at a specified interval of 1000 milliseconds, that is 1 second. Inside the interval function, we create a new date object called today. This object represents the current date and time. Next, we extract the specific components we need from today object. We use the getDate method to retrieve the day of the month. The getDay method to get the day of the week represented as a numeric value from 0 to 6. And getMonth method to obtain month also represented as numeric value from 0 to 11. We then use these values to access the corresponding names from weekdays and month names. We then store them in variables day and month. Moving on, we retrieve the current hour and minute using the get hours and get minutes method from the today object.
However, to ensure that the minutes are always displayed with two digits, that is, example, 09 instead of just 9, we use a ternary operator. If minutes is less than 10, we prepend a 0 to it, otherwise we keep the value as is. After that, we update the HTML content of the date container element. We use template literals enclosed in backticks to dynamically generate the HTML structure, inserting the day, date, and month variables into separate paragraphs. These values are now displayed, however, they are on a black background, hence they are very hard to see. Similarly, we update the HTML content of clock container element using template literals to display the hours and minutes values separated by a colon. So the entire process described above repeats every second to provide an updated live clock and date display on this web page. Now let's go back to CSS to style this clock. We first target the container and set its width to 21.87 em which determines its size on the page. To align the contents of container vertically and horizontally, we use display grid method. Next, we set the position to absolute and use the transform and top and left properties to center the container exactly on the center of web page. Let me set the color to white so that they are easy to see. Now you can see these values. We set the background to a bright blue color to make the background pop and set the border radius to 0.5 em to give it a sleek look. Moving on to the styles for the clock and date containers. We set the clock container background color to a dark grey color. The text inside the clock container is set to white color. This is done to improve the contrast. We center the text using text align center. The font size is set to 3.75 em making the clock display large and eye catching. We also apply a small margin left of 0.2 em to give some spacing on the left side of the clock. Lastly, we add a subtle border radius and some padding to give the clock container a polished appearance. For the date container, we set the padding to 1 em on the top. Also 1 em on the bottom. The background color is set to a similar blue color. The text color is set to white ensuring good visibility. We center the text with text align center and add a border radius of 0.5 em to give it rounded corners. Now additionally we have a more specific selector that is date container span to target the span element inside the date container. We set the font size to 2.5 em making the date display slightly smaller than the clock display for visual hierarchy. 
and that's it this wraps up our project if you have any doubts or queries you can comment them below if you like this video hit the like button and subscribe to my youtube channel for more such tutorials till then happy coding